to open up the control box there are security screws don't ask me why it's a three slotted screw I've never bought the driver but you can generally get them started with a pair of pliers and then just twist them off by hand there's really not a lot of electronics in the control box um, what it primarily is is a power supply and a way to switch from the two video formats which is primarily done um, through an analog switch and so if you open it up what you'll see is a power supply which is this and is a transformer driven supply it's not a switcher um, the video essentially comes in here goes under this power supply board and winds up over here on what's known as a CPC connector and this is the connector that's going to send your signal to the head mounted display but there's really no video electronics in here at all it's uh, a lot of helmets use an external power supply a brick or a wall wart um, liquid image chose to make their own power supply generally the motivation for a wall wart is that the safety testing um, UL CSA um, is usually done by the power supply vendor and it makes it less expensive for the ultimate device manufacturer for some reason liquid image decided they were willing to shoulder the burden of safety approvals so that's that the CPC connector on the control box connects to the other end of the cable coming from the helmet and as you can see just you have to align it and then screw it down it locks in place this takes you to the back of the helmet there's a strain relief there is this big black thing which is actually a lead counterweight that keeps the helmet balanced because the LCD display is so heavy um, that it needs weight in the rear and inside this counterweight is a little printed circuit board that converts from all the little cables in this uh, braided c cable connection to the control box to a flat ribbon cable which comes out of here and let's try to look at it, my pre disassembled unit in order to get at the interface board at the back of the helmet you have to dismount the headphones these are they come with Sony MDR V400 headphones you need a Roberts driver and you pop these two screws loose out comes there's a little connector to unplug the headphones and they're now free and interestingly enough these screws also mount the top of this lead counterweight and so now for the bottom of the counterweight you're going to need um, a 764 hex key and you simply undo these and actually they're backed by little screws here so it's all relatively easy once you get it loose I don't know if you can see but they're nuts not screws excuse me on the back undo these two and all I do is get them loose and then you can spin the nuts off and there's some carved spacers in there to flatten the nuts out against the curved surface and voila you've seen I've now removed the helmet counterweight and inside is a tiny little circuit board where all the wires and coaxes come from the cable that goes to the control box and that there is a, what's called a ZIF connector here which connects to the flat ribbon cable that's going to go up the top of the helmet shell under the velcro and connect to the LCD 
interface board up here. So that's essentially the teardown um, from there. So a lot of people have asked, how do we modify a liquid image helmet to produce higher resolution? And so everybody says, well, can I swap out the LCD display? And the answer is, that's a start because you need to find an LCD display that's approximately the same size as the one that was in there so that it'll fit snugly inside this molded plastic case. And then you're confronted with the issue of bringing the signal to your new LCD display. This cabling system is specific to this sharp display which runs off of an NTSC composite or an RGB RS-170 signal um, and you may find that if you're trying to drive a higher resolution display that you'll need a different cable and so you would need to thread or refabricate a new cable from the control box um, you would potentially need to do something different inside the counterweight to bring that cable in and convert it to something thin enough to run up the top of the inside of the helmet shell. Um, pay no attention to this extra wire here. I've, we've got a Polymus tracker already installed. Um, this is an option that I put in. It didn't come from Liquid Image. But uh, you can try to do stuff like adding trackers quite easily as well. Um, but in any event, if you're going to run a higher re resolution LCD display, you may need to modify your cables and somehow bring the signal from the cable entrance at the back of the helmet and bring it in so that it finally gets to the LCD panel. Um, presuming that your panel is the same size, the optics should work just dandy. Um, and you, so you shouldn't have a lot of trouble there. You'll probably want to bring up audio um, from your, in your new cable to drive a set of headphones. And then lastly, you'll probably find that the liquid image control box may not be what you're after. It may produce the wrong voltages. This one produces 5 volts positive, 12 volts positive, and a negative. 8 volts as a control signal, um, you may find that your new LCD display requires, has different power requirements. You may not like the CPC connector. It's kind of up to you to figure things out. Um, people have also asked about the possibility of stereoscopy. Um, the liquid image, as it's manufactured, is a monoscopic. It only has one screen, one signal, one lens, although you, the lens is big enough that you can see um, through both of your eyes. Um, to do stereoscopy, you might be able to put liquid crystal shutters, a pair of them in front of your eyes, and somehow synchronize them with your LCD panel. Um, this panel is an NTSC format panel, and you might be able to synchronize uh, and do a, essentially a set of flicker glasses. Unfortunately, it will flicker because this panel runs at 30 hertz interlaced, um, 60 hertz fields. Um, the other issue with shutter glasses and LCD displays is shutter glasses rely on polarized light. They have two polarizers in each set of each lens of the LCD shutter glasses. And of course, LCD displays also rely on polarized light. That is, the light that comes out of it is polarized linearly in one direction. And so you may need to fiddle with your shutter glasses to find a compact, compatible um, light polarization angle um, to see what happens. So stereoscopy is probably is a possibility. I don't know anybody who's who's done it, but um, there are shutter glasses that work with some LCD displays. So you never know. So with that in mind, I think you've gotten the basic tour of the Liquid Image MRG 2.2 helmet. Um, I hope uh, if you get a hold of one, you'll en enjoy it. Um, it's eminently moddable because it's very simply made. Um, the parts are coarse, they're not delicate. Um, should be, it's easy to tear down. You can do it in about 10 minutes as I've demonstrated here. And um, 
it's possible to swap out parts if you um, are a good person with um, LCD displays and uh, you know how to tinker these things up. So anyway, that's enough for today. Thanks.